So your website sucks. You set up your apparel brand. You've gone through the hassle of designing, developing, manufacturing your collection, and now it's time to sell. You're getting visitors onto your website, but for some reason, you just can't get them to convert. What seems to be the problem? Do you have a shitty product? Do you have a poor quality marketing? Or could it be that your website is the bottleneck? Well, it could be any of the above, but what I found in my experience as a fashion designer and as someone who has helped thousands of brands go from a starting point all the way to generating a good amount of sales every single month is that usually your website where your brand lives is where you can get the biggest return on investment for just putting a little bit of time and effort. What I've managed to do over the last couple of years is I have worked with my customers not only to design their websites, but also to help them to get people on the website, but also to convert against it. So on today's episode, I'm going to run you through my homepage improvements, the upgrades that I implement into every single website that we work on. And I have had tangible results. The first one is going to be your menu bar or your navigation bar. So this is going to be the bar that is at the top of your homepage. And for most people, what they do is they either over-design it. They have way too many different sections in their bar, which overwhelms the user, or they just don't think it all the way through. When you're scrolling through the homepage, you lose the navigation bar. Create a clean navigation bar, one that is clearly blended. Offer the main outlets that you want your customers to be able to engage with. Instead of having all of the different sections of your website listed, I'd recommend around five to six maximum. You could have maybe new collections or what's new. You could have men's, you could have women's. Make sure as well to have a sticky menu one that follows your users as they're scrolling down the page. This just makes it that much easier for them to get back up to the main navigation bar and to access other parts of the website. Number two is a high quality hero banner image and consider adding a slider of multiple images in there. When someone lands on your website, it's the first image that they're going to see. If you're just simply putting something that looks cool, that may be giving your customers some indication of the fact that you're integrated into nature, but it doesn't go beyond that. So it's not just about adding a visually stunning image. It's also about giving context for what your brand is, what you do, and what makes you unique. Add some sort of clicker or some sort of slider where customers can slide through different versions of your hero banner image. Something that is new and exciting about the brand. And then as you click through, maybe you get a men's collection, and then you click through again, maybe you get a woman's collection. That's one way of doing it. Maybe the hero image is a split image of men's and women's new releases. And then you click, and then you're talking about fabrics. Your website, especially on the homepage, needs to be optimized for speed. People, especially those that you're paying to get onto your website, are not going to be that patient. They may wait half a second, they may wait a second, but if it takes longer than that for them or for the images to load, then you're going to be out of luck. My recommendation is use an image compressor that retains the quality of the image, but that minimizes its pixel density, that minimizes its overall size, making the website faster to load and getting customers to actually stay on the website for long. On your homepage, consider adding a featured collections or featured categories grid of images. Websites like Lululemon, websites like Gymshark do this all the time, especially on the homepage. Use imagery that allows the text on the front to stand out. Typically what I recommend doing is some sort of gradient or linear gradient overlay at the bottom of the card that allows you to place the name of the collection or the name of the card at the bottom and subtly that gradient fades into nothing so that you can clearly see the image behind it. Number four, please, please, please use specified product recommendations. These can be items that are in high demand. These can be best sellers. These can be items that are the newest in your collection that you want to get and you want to turn customers' attention to. By doing this, you give your customers access to the product cards on the homepage. What is the difference between a product card and let's just say a collection card? A product card is what you think of when you open up a product collection page. You see all of the different cards of the, all the different products lined up in rows and in columns. When you click on one of these product cards, it takes you to the product page where you can read all about the product and you can select your size, your color, and you can check out. Whether you're using Shopify or you've built up your own website, there's a ton of third-party plugins that you can look into in order to curate your customer's product selections. Number five is create a sense of urgency. Provide limited time offers that are clearly listed on the banner above. These limited time offers create a sense of urgency that get and compel your customers to act today instead of tomorrow, after tomorrow, 
or the day after. Overdoing this technique can come off as cheesy and it can come off as overly pushy. So you want to maintain that fine balance. Number six, always integrate customer reviews and testimonials into your homepage, typically at the bottom of the page. Imagine a customer that's landing on your website for the first time. They've never heard of your brand, but you have a product that compels them to want to buy, but they still have their doubts. Your customer testimonials is going to be the thing that puts them over the edge, that convinces them to pull the trigger, that if others have trusted you, then, well, they are willing to take a chance on it. When it comes to your customer testimonials, I recommend three key things. Provide real images of real customers. Try to get UGC or user generated content of people that are wearing your products in that specific photo. Do this sort of element in a carousel style grid where people can go through different testimonials so as to not overwhelm the homepage with a bunch of different reviews. A major missed opportunity to increase your conversions through your homepage is email subscriptions. Consider offering something in return for your email newsletter. If you're selling a sports or a fitness wear line, then maybe they're into getting a better body. Maybe they're into getting a better physique. Maybe you offer a tailored program or a physique or a bodybuilding program that is meant to get them in shape. In order to increase conversions, immediately offer live chat support. If you don't offer live chat support, consider integrating with an AI tool to fill in the gap for when you don't have someone there that can answer questions based on your customer's responses. A live chat that we typically use at Fit Design is crisp and what you see a lot of businesses do is either they offer WhatsApp chat or they offer other types of third-party messaging platforms that you can easily tap into and chat with them right on the website. Last but not least is going to be optimize your website for different platforms, specifically mobile and desktop. Guys, let me know if you enjoyed this episode. Also, if you want my personal opinion on how you can optimize your website or you wanna work with me and my team to design and develop an excellent e-commerce website for your apparel brand, check the link in the description. I offer one-on-one -on -one consultation calls every single week. And what we can do is we can look at your website, I can give you critical analysis, and I guarantee you, we can up your conversion rates simply by implementing some select key changes as I've done with hundreds of my customers in the past. So I say this from the very bottom of my heart. Thank you to all you amazing people who have chosen to tune into this episode of Fit Design TV. Until next week's episode, stay awesome.